Hi there, this is Vadim from Online Training for Everyone. And in this video, I'll share with you how to pass a Corn Ferry Employment Assessment Test. The Corn Ferry Assessment Test, also known as Corn Ferry Talent Q Assessment, is a psychometric test used by organizations for evaluating candidates or assessing the performance and potential of employees. The test was developed to help companies make informed decisions regarding their talent selection and development. The Corn Ferry Assessment Test measures various aspects of individual cognitive abilities, personality traits, and behavioral competencies. Corn Ferry Assessment Test typically consists of multiple choice questions and interactive exercises designed to evaluate candidate skills and aptitudes in areas such as problem solving, critical thinking, numerical reasoning, verbal reasoning, and situational judgment. In this video, you will have everything you need to get prepared for Corn Ferry Employment Assessment Test. We will share with you sample questions, answers, and solutions, and we'll give you an idea on what to expect on the actual test. Make sure to watch this video from the beginning to end, and if necessary, multiple times, until you have a good understanding of the questions and know how to solve them easily. If you would like to practice with the most recent questions for the assessment test, make sure to follow the links in the description and in comments of this video. And now, let's go ahead and get started to help you prepare. Here is one of my favorite questions to test your analytical skills and attention to details. You need to determine which of the values is the smallest. And you're presented with five different values. The choices are A, 3 fourth, choice B, 0 0.6, choice C, 7 12th, choice D, 0 0.7, and last but not least, choice E, 4 5th. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure it out? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer, and obviously if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To get to the correct answer, we need to convert all the values to the common format. You can convert all the values to decimals, or you convert all the values to fractions, it doesn't matter, but it has to be common. I chose decimal format. 3 fourths in decimal is 0 0.75, 0 0.6 is 0 0.6, and 7 twelfth is 0 0.583. 0 0.7 has the same value, and 4 fifth is 0 0.8. Now you can easily see that the smallest value is choice C, 7 twelfth, which is approximately as 0 0.58333. Did you get to the similar solution? If not, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. In this section, we will look at the work simulation test, which is used to evaluate candidates' ability to perform tasks and skills required for the job. The questions on this type of test typically involve simulated scenarios and tasks that are similar to what the candidate would encounter on the job, such as data analysis, customer service, and problem solving. Let's look at some sample work simulation assessment test questions to get you ready. Here's a very interesting question to determine how well you can work with others. You need to determine what is the best way to schedule a meeting with the client who is based in a different time zone and has limited availability. You need to select out of four possible choices. Choice A. Schedule the meeting without considering the client's time zone. Choice B. Email the client with several date and time options without specifying the time zone. Choice C. Check the client's time zone and suggest several date and time options that work for both the client and your manager. And last but not least, choice D. Schedule the meeting during your manager's preferred time slot without considering the client's availability or time zone. Take a close look to see if you can select the right answer. And I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I believe the correct answer here is choice C. Option C is the best choice because it takes into consideration the client's availability and time zone. There are two stakeholders in this action, your manager and your client. And you need to check the time zone and suggest several date and time options that work for both the client and your manager. This will ensure that the meeting is scheduled at a convenient time for both parties and this minimizes the risk of confusion and miscommunication. Let's also look at other options to determine why they might be incorrect. Let's look at option A. It is wrong because it ignores the client's time zone 
which will lead to scheduling conflicts. Option B is also incorrect because it does not specify the time zone which can cause confusion and miscommunication. And last but not least, option D is incorrect as well because it disregards the client's availability and time zone which can lead to scheduling conflicts and damage the company's reputation. When you solved this challenge on your own, did you come up with a different answer? If this is the case, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. Very frequently on the test, companies look at your customer service skills. This is one of these types of questions. You work as a CSR and need to help troubleshoot internet connectivity. What is the best approach to troubleshoot slow internet speeds for a customer? You're presented with four choices and you need to select one. Choice A, ask the customer to restart their modem and transfer to technical support if issue persists. Choice B, ask the customer to restart their computer and transfer to technical support if issue persists. Choice C, ask the customer to check their internet connection and transfer to technical support if the issue persists. And last but not least, choice D, walk the customer through the thorough troubleshooting process, including resetting the modem and computer, checking cables and connections, and testing the internet speeds. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. If you need to pause this video, feel free to do this to reread the answers and select the correct one. On my end, I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it or have a different important considerations, please make sure to bring them up in comments. I believe the correct answer here is choice D. To remind you, in choice D, you would need to walk the customer through a thorough troubleshooting process, including resetting the modem and computer, checking cables and connections, and testing the internet speeds. Only this approach shows your commitment to providing excellent customer service and may even resolve the issue without need for a technical support transfer. One important thing to note, the original question is kind of convoluted and it uses the acronyms. Just to clarify for you, CSR stands for Customer Service Representative. And now let's look at the incorrect choices, choices A, B and C to see why they are incorrect. I think those options are incorrect because they only involve asking the customer to perform a single action and then transferring them to technical support. This approach may not resolve the issue and it may result in a customer having to wait longer for the resolution. Did you come up with a different answer? If you did, please make sure to post your answer, considerations and thought process in comments. Here's a very interesting question on how to provide recommendation to your manager for the new product line. Your manager wants you to provide a recommendation on whether to continue investing in the new product line based on your analysis of the sales data. What is the best approach to analyze the sales data and provide the recommendation? You're presented with four different choices. Let's look at each one of them. Choice A, conduct a simple analysis of the sales data and provide recommendation based on initial findings. Choice B, conduct a comprehensive analysis of the sales data, including market trends and competitor data. Provide a recommendation based on your findings. Choice C, provide a recommendation based on personal opinion and expertise without conducting any analysis of the sales data. And last but not least, choice D, provide a recommendation based on the sales data from a similar product line without analyzing the sales data for the new product line. Take a close look to see if you can select the correct answer. Are you ready? Ready or not, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I think the correct answer here is choice B. In choice B, you need to conduct a comprehensive analysis of the sales data, including market trends and competitor data. Provide a recommendation based on your findings. I think this choice is correct because it allows you to provide a thorough understanding of the sales data, ensuring more accurate and informed recommendation. Conducting a comprehensive analysis of the sales data is essential in making an informed decision for your manager. Let's also look at the incorrect choices to determine why they are incorrect. Option A is too simplistic and can get the result in an incomplete assessment of the sales data. Option C is unreliable and can be seen as unprofessional since it's based on personal opinion and experience without any supporting data. And last but not least, choice D is not recommended since it involves using sales data from a similar product line, which may not be relevant to the new product line. Was your answer different? If it was, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. In this section, we will look at the sample questions for verbal reasoning test for employment. 
which typically represents an assessment used by employers to measure candidates' ability to comprehend and analyze written information. The questions typically involve reading passages, answering questions based on the information presented, as well as identifying relationships between words and understanding the vocabulary. Let's look at some sample questions that you typically see on the test to make sure you get ready. A very interesting question for you to try your skills. You're presented with nine letters of the English alphabet, and you need to build English business word. The letters are O-L-S-U-O-T-I-N-S. -S. Take a close look to see if you can construct English business word. I am going to give you a quick hint. The word refers to a set of products, services, and strategies that are designed to solve specific business problems and meet the needs of organizations. Did you figure it out? The answer is solutions. Business solutions are typically developed by vendors or service providers who have expertise in particular industry or functional area. The word is spelled as S-O-L-U-T-I-O-N-S. And the goal of business solutions is to help organizations improve their efficiency, productivity, profitability, and overall performance by addressing specific challenges or opportunities in a strategic and effective manner. Can you come up with any other words using the same letters only once? If you did, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. Here's an amazing question to test your verbal reasoning and analytical skills. You need to arrange the words into a coherent sentence and determine the last word in this sentence. The words are A. Coverage B. Protects C. Against D. Financial E. Losses F. Business G. Risks Take a close look, see if you can build this sentence and determine the last word in this sentence. Did you figure it out? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To get to the correct answer, let's look at each word in this sentence to determine the meaning of the word and how to use it correct way. We start with the words coverage, business, and risks. These are not the objects of the sentence. We also look at the against and financial. These are prepositions and adjectives. The word protects is the verb and it provides valuable information in the sentence. The word losses is the object of the sentence and it provides information about what business insurance protects against. Based on this information, let's build the sentence. Business insurance protects against financial losses. Based on this, we can determine that the last word in the sentence is losses. And this is the object of the sentence, and it also provides a specific type of protection. So I believe the correct answer here is choice E, losses. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. There is an amazing question to test your English business vocabulary. You need to build English business word using all the letters presented on the screen. And you only need to use each letter once. The letters are G-O-I-S-L-T-I-C-S. -I -I Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Because I want you to succeed so much, I'm going to give you a quick hint. The word represents the process of planning, implementing, and controlling the movements of storage of goods or materials from the point of origin to the point of consumption. Did you figure it out? I'm going to move forward and share with you my version of the answer. But if you have a better way or alternative way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. The answer is logistics. The word is spelled as L-O-G-I-S-T-I-C-S. To get better at solving these types of challenges, try to visualize the word and try different combinations. For example, if you look at original nine letters, you will see that if we start from the middle, you can start building the word L-O-G and then you build the remainder of the word to get to the correct answer. Do you have any other tips, tricks or techniques that can help you solve these types of challenges? Please make sure to post them in comments. I love this question because the answer represents such a powerful business concept. You're presented with 10 letters and you need to build English business word by using each letter only once. 
the letters are N I N A V O N I T O. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. I am going to give you a quick hint. The word refers to the process of introducing new ideas, products, services, or processes that add value to society, the economy, or organizations. Did you figure it out? I hope the hint was helpful because I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And if you have a better way to solve it, as usual, please make sure to post in comments. My answer is innovation, and the word is spelled as I N N O V A T I O N. What's interesting is that innovation involves combining creativity, technology, and practicality to develop new solutions that meet people's needs and address emerging challenges. Innovation is also crucial for the growth and development of the businesses, economies, and societies, and it drives competitiveness, productivity, and progress. Let's look at the examples of the most recent consumer innovations. Number one is streaming services. The popularity of streaming services such as Netflix, Hulu, and Disney Plus disrupted the traditional TV industry by offering on-demand access to the vast library of movies and TV shows. The fact that I can broadcast my videos and share them with you directly is also part of streaming services innovation. The next one on my list is electric cars. The development of electric cars by companies such as Tesla, Nissan, and Chevrolet has provided consumers with a more sustainable and energy-efficient alternative to traditional gasoline-powered vehicles. Another example of recent innovation is wearable technology. The emergence of wearable technologies such as smartwatches, fitness trackers, and virtual reality headsets had powered people to track their health and fitness, stay connected, and experience immersive digital content. We also recently enjoyed innovation of online marketplaces. Companies such as Amazon, eBay, and Etsy revolutionized the way people shop by providing them with vast selection of products, competitive prices, and fast delivery options. And last but not least on my list is the smart home technology. The rise of smart home technology allowed people to control and automate various aspects of their homes from lightning and temperature to security and entertainment, using voice commands and mobile apps. Do you know any other examples of recent innovations? Please make sure to share them in comments so we can all learn. In this section, we will look at the sample questions for cognitive test, which represents an assessment used by employers to evaluate candidates' mental abilities, such as problem solving, critical thinking, and memory. The questions in the test can vary, but typically involve math problems, logic puzzles, spatial reasoning, and verbal comprehension. Let's look at some sample cognitive assessment test questions we typically see on the test. Have you ever dealt with the money tree? Well, now it's your opportunity. And it's your opportunity to check your attention to details. You're presented with the money tree making enterprise. And you need to calculate the total value of money that you see in the picture. What's interesting here is that each coin is one cent and each bill equals one dollar. Once you complete the calculations, please select one out of four possible choices. Choice A, ten dollars and eighteen cents. Choice B, twelve dollars and nine cents. Choice C, fifteen dollars and fifteen cents. And last but not least, choice D, eighteen dollars and seven cents. Take a close look to see if you can complete the calculations. I think the correct answer here is choice A, ten dollars and eighteen cents. And here's why. I counted ten dollars in the picture. Let's start with the top of the money tree. One, two, three, four, and then on the right we see another group of the dollar bills. There are five dollars there. Let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five. And then we see the hard to notice dollar bill on the top of the flower pot. Now let's count the coins. We see nine coins to the right of the flower. Then we see eight coins coming out of the watering can. And then there is one coin on top of the watering can, which is easy to miss. Did you get to the same answer? Choice A, $10.18. If you didn't, please make sure to post your answer and whatever other coins or dollar bills I missed in comments. I enjoy solving pattern questions because they're so easy to understand, but sometimes not so easy to solve. We are presented with the sequence of numbers, and we need to find the missing number, which is the next in the sequence. 
The numbers are 25, 20, 16, 13, 11, and then comes the missing number. You need to calculate the missing number out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Choice A is 8, choice B is 10, choice C is 7, and choice D is 9. Take a close look to see if you can do the calculations and come up with the solution for the missing number. It looks confusing, isn't it? But believe me, there's a hope at the end of the tunnel. And I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Here we have a concept of decrement. And the pattern is that the next number is calculated as previous number minus decrement. And decrement increases by 1 with each number in the sequence. Let's take a close look. Our first number in the sequence is 25. And our first initial decrement is minus 5. 25 minus 5 equals 20. And this is how we come to the second number. Then we decrease decrement by 1, and the decrement becomes minus 4. 20 minus 4 equals 16. 16 minus 3 equals 13. 13 minus 2 equals 11. And 11 minus 1 equals 10. So the correct answer here is choice B, 10. Was your answer different? Please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments then, so we can all learn. Here's the very interesting question, which tests your ability to find solutions to unusual problems. You're presented with four expressions, and in fourth expression, the result of the expression is missing. Let's look at each expression closely. The first expression is 4 plus 2 equals 26. Something's definitely going on with this expression here. Second one is 8 plus 1 equals 17 height. Same thing here. And the third one is 6 plus 5 equals 111. In fourth expression, 7 plus 3, you need to find the result, which is presented as the missing number represented by question mark. And you have four choices to select from. Choice A, 608. Choice B, 410. Choice C, 290. And last but not least, choice D, 375. Take a close look to this unusual set of expressions to see if you can come up with the solution. Are you ready? Let me give you a quick hint. What if you introduce into this set of expressions not just the plus sign, but also a minus sign? Would that make any difference? I hope the hint was helpful because I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As you might have figured out, we are not dealing with typical math expressions here. Because the pattern here is that the last two digits are calculated based on the two expressions, subtraction and addition. Let's look at the example. The first expression is presented to us as 4 plus 2 equals 26. But numbers in 26 are calculated differently. For example, first number 2 is calculated as 4 minus 2. This is where I give you a hint of using not just the plus sign, but also look at the minus sign. And the second digit in 26, which is 6, is calculated as 4 plus 2 equals 6. Now let's look at the second expression. Second expression's result is calculated as 8 minus 1 equals 7, and then 8 plus 1 equals 9. The third expression is 6 minus 5 is 1, and 6 plus 5 is 11. That's where we get a three-digit number, 111. And now we can calculate the final fourth expression, which is calculated as 7 minus 3, so the first digit would be 4. And then we calculate it as 7 plus 3, which would be 10. So the correct answer here is choice B, 410. Did you figure it out? Or did you find a different solution? Please make sure to share your solution and rationale in comments. Here's an amazing question to test your spatial reasoning. You're presented with the three-dimensional view, and you need to select view from the opposite side out of four possible choices. The choices are A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can select the right solution. Please look closely, as it may not be as easy as it seems. Are you ready? Because I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And if you have a better way to solve it, obviously please make sure to post in comments. If your answer to this question was choice C, you answered it correctly. There are four objects on the original three-dimensional image. We have a duck, we have a basketball, we have a smartphone, and we have a hammer, 
which is barely noticeable on the original picture. And the easiest way to solve this challenge is to select one object and track it on the opposite side. I selected a duck, but you can as well select a hammer or a smartphone. It is a little bit harder with the ball because it's in the middle and it's a symmetrical object. So let's go back to the duck. If you look at the original image, you see that the duck is looking to the left and it is on the left side of the ball, which means that if we look from the opposite side, the duck will be looking to the right and would be on the right side of the ball. We frequently see these types of questions on the test, so to help you solve these types of challenges, here are the views of these objects from a different sides. Take a look at these objects from the right, from the left side, and take a look at this set of objects when duck and the ball have changed the position. I wanted to ask you, did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments, as well as you can supplement it with some tips on how to solve these types of challenges. Have you ever dealt with the money tree? Well, now it's your opportunity, and it's your opportunity to check your attention to details. You're presented with the money tree making enterprise, and you need to calculate the total value of money that you see in the picture. What's interesting here is that each coin is one cent, and each bill equals one dollar. You need to identify all coins and all bills and count the total value. Once you complete the calculations, please select one out of four possible choices. Choice A, $10.18. Choice B, $12.09. Choice C, $15.15. And last but not least, choice D, $18.07. Take a close look to see if you can complete the calculations. I think the correct answer here is choice A, $10.18. And here's why. I counted $10 in the picture. Let's start with the top of the money tree. One, two, three, four. And then on the right, we see another group of the dollar bills. There are $5 there. Let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five. And then we see the hard to notice dollar bill on the top of the flower pot. Now let's count the coins. We see nine coins to the right of the flower pot. Then we see eight coins coming out of the watering can. And then there is one coin on top of the watering can, which is easy to miss. Did you get to the same answer? Choice A, $10.18. If you didn't, please make sure to post your answer and whatever other coins or dollar bills I missed in comments. In this section, we will look at the logical reasoning questions that are used to evaluate candidates' ability to reason and draw logical conclusions from the information given. The questions on this type of test typically involve sequences of shapes and numbers, analogies, and deductive reasoning questions. Let's look at some sample logical reasoning assessment test questions to get you prepared. I love this challenge because it tests your analytical skills and spatial reasoning skills so well. You need to find the resulting shape after the transformations. You're presented with the square that consists of different triangles of a different color. And you need to turn the original shape 90 degree clockwise three times. You have four different choices to select the shape after the transformations. Choice A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can calculate the final solution. Did you figure it out? Because I am moving forward to share with you my version and my way of solving it. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To solve this challenge, you need to mentally turn the original shape 90 degrees three times. This is not easy to do because our brain is not really designed for this. But if we take one of the triangles and try to follow this triangle by turning the original square, this task might be much easier to accomplish. The caveat here is that, that we need to select triangles that are not symmetrical on both sides. For example, red triangles are symmetrical. You see red triangles on the left and red triangles on the right. And if we try to follow it, it would be extremely hard to detect where the red triangle will end up. But if we take green triangles, any one of them, or yellow triangles, they're much easier to follow. So let's do the turning. Let's take the original square and I am going to follow the green triangle on the left. 
Let's do the first turn 90 degrees. You see that the green triangle ended up on the top. Let's do another turn. We follow the same green triangle and now it's on the right side. And the last 90 degree turn, our green triangle ended up at the bottom. So the correct choice here is choice A, where green triangle ended up on the bottom. Do you have a better way to solve it? Or maybe did you come up with a different solution? Please make sure to post your thoughts and rationale in comments. Here's a very interesting question, which might make you think, but hopefully you will get it very quickly. If five people can sew five shirts in five minutes, how long will it take for 100 people to sew 100 shirts? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 500 minutes. Choice B, 100 minutes. Choice C, five minutes. And last but not least, choice D, 60 minutes. Take a close look, maybe pause this video to see if you can get to the right answer. And on my end, I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Here's the trick. If five people can sew five shirts in five minutes, we can say that one person can sew a shirt in five minutes. Now, if 100 people work together, their combined productivity will be 100 that of a one person. Because we can scale up so easily in this production, it will take 100 people five minutes to sew 100 shirts. So the correct answer here is choice C, five minutes. Did you get to the same answer? If you didn't, please make sure to share your answer and rationale in comments. I love this question because it is used very frequently to test your analytical skills and business math skills. You're presented with three expressions. The first expression is candy multiplied by sun equals 15. The second expression is candy plus 4 equals 9. And third and last expression is 12 equals sun multiplied by question mark. And you need to find this question mark and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 2. Choice B, 3. Choice C, 4. And choice D, 5. Take a close look, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Are you ready? I think you might benefit from a quick hint. And my hint to you would be, take a look at the middle expression. Are you ready now? Let's move forward and I'll share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. This set of expressions looks unsolvable. But in reality, if we start with the middle expression, we can actually solve it. Let me demonstrate. Let's start with the expression candy plus 4 equals 9. Believe it or not, but we can actually calculate it. Candy would be equal 9 minus 4 and we can calculate the value for candy, which would be equal to 5. Now, knowing the value of candy, let's focus on the top expression. Candy plus sun equals 15. We know that the value of candy is 5, and when we substitute candy, it would be equal 5 multiplied by sun equals 15. So the calculated value for the sun would be 3. And now we can focus on the last expression. 12 equals sun multiplied by question mark. We know that the value of sun is 3, and we can substitute it, and the new expression will be 12 equals 3 multiplied by question mark. Question mark can be calculated by 12 divided by 4. So the end result would be answer C, 4. If you came up with the different answer, please post your answer and solution in comments. I enjoy solving pattern questions because they're so easy to understand, but sometimes not so easy to solve. We are presented with the sequence of numbers, and we need to find the missing number, which is the next in the sequence. The numbers are 25, 20, 16, 13, 11, and then comes the missing number. You need to calculate the missing number out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Choice A is 8, choice B is 10, choice C is 7, and choice D is 9. Take a close look to see if you can do the calculations and come up with the solution for the missing number. It looks confusing, isn't it? But believe me, there is a hope at the end of the tunnel. And I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Here we have a concept of decrement. And the pattern is that the next number is calculated as previous number minus decrement. And decrement increases by 1 with each number in the sequence. Let's take a close look. Our first number in the sequence is 25. And our first initial decrement is minus 5. 25 minus 5 equals 20, and this is how we come to the second number. 
then we decrease decrement by 1 and the decrement becomes minus 4. 20 minus 4 equals 16. 16 minus 3 equals 13. 13 minus 2 equals 11. And 11 minus 1 equals 10. So the correct answer here is choice B, 10. Was your answer different? Please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments then, so we can all learn. This is one of my favorite questions just because it's so unusual. But the answer here is very simple. You are presented with the set of 8 circles. 6 of the circles are visible and you need to select 2 missing ones. You have 4 different choices to find the missing circles. Choices A, B, C and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To answer this question, we need to detect the pattern. And the pattern here is very simple. Each circle is broken down into sections with darker sections and lighter sections. And if you look closely, you will see that all circles are grouped in pairs. And the pattern is hidden in the sequence for circle pairs, with each subsequent pair being similar to the previous one. Let's take a close look. To better understand the pattern, let's give each circle a unique number. If we start with the top row of circles, the numbers would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and the bottom row of circles will have numbers 5, 6, 7, and 8, with 7 and 8 being our missing pair. If you look closely at the circle 1, you will see that there is a dark section at the 2 o'clock, and circle 2 has two dark sections, one at noon and another one is at 2 o'clock. Similar pattern you see in circles 3 and 4, and then circles 5 and 6 also mimic the same pattern. Looking at possible answers, you see the choices A, B, C do not meet this pattern, and the only right answer that fits the pattern is choice D. Hopefully you've got to the same conclusion, and if you didn't, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. Here's the very interesting drum problem, which I have full confidence that you will solve very quickly. You're presented with three drums, and the next drum in the sequence is missing. You need to select the next drum out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure it out? You would be surprised how simple the answer is. And that's why I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To solve this challenge, we need to understand the pattern. And the pattern will help us get to the correct solution. Even though drums and drumsticks look similar, this is not the case. If you look closely, you will see that only drumsticks are the same. But drums are different because they have dotted designs on each drum. Let me assign a unique number to each drum in the sequence. We will reference these drums as 1, 2, 3, and then the missing drum we will reference as number 4. Let's look closely at drum number 1. On the top of the drum 1, dotted pattern consists only of the white dots. But as it continues, you see different colors. Let's follow these colors. We have white, yellow, blue, pink, purple, and green. If we go to drum number two, you see that the dotted pattern shifts as it goes from left to right, and then this pattern restarts. For example, the last dot in the drum one is green, but then in drum two, this green dot restarts the pattern. To get to the correct answer, we need to continue shifting the pattern and get to the correct pattern for drum number four. And the correct pattern for drum number four will be pink, purple, green, white, yellow, and blue. And drum that matches this pattern will be choice C. Did you get to the correct solution? If not, please make sure to post your solution and rationale in comments. I love this question because it tests your spatial reasoning and analytical skills so well. You're presented with overlapping set of objects. We have in the picture pink square, red star, gray circle, yellow star, green circle, blue box, and pink diamond. In the middle of the picture, we have a gap where nothing is presented, and this gap is represented by the question mark. You need to fill the gap with one of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. 
take a close look at the picture to see if you can fill the gap and find the missing object. I'm pretty sure you got it because I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. The correct answer here is choice C. Let's confirm and verify it by moving this choice to fill the gap. To solve these types of challenges, you need to mentally build the object in your head by continuing to visualize in your head one of the existing objects in the picture. I used green circle. It is very obvious which choice would continue the green circle. But you can also use yellow star, blue square or pink square. Do you know any other ways how to solve these problems? Please make sure to post your ideas on how to better solve them in comments. In this section, we will look at the leadership assessment test for employment, which measures candidates' leadership potential and skills. The questions on this type of test typically involve scenarios and situational judgment and may assess traits such as decision-making, communication, conflict resolution, and delegation. Let's look at some sample leadership assessment test questions we typically see on the test to prepare you for the assessment. A lot of times during the test, you might be presented with very uncomfortable situation to determine how you would behave. This is one of those test questions. You got promoted to the manager role that your colleague at work was also hoping for. Now things are awkward between you two. You want to keep the relationship going, but your colleague is not speaking to you outside of the required communications during the team meetings. You have five choices to select all that apply in order. Choice A. Apologize for the fact that you were promoted over your colleague. Choice B. Ask your colleague about her career aspirations. Choice C. Schedule a meeting to discuss your colleague's feelings. Choice D. Stay professional. Choice E. Prepare the 30-day action plan as a manager of the department. Take a close look, maybe pause this video, give yourself 10 to 15, maybe 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Are you ready? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I think this question is about demonstrating leadership at the higher level of job responsibilities. Let's take a close look. I think you cannot control other people's reactions to your promotion. Typically, the best candidate gets selected for the promotion if there is a competition within the department. Because of this, you should not feel bad that you were selected for the job and instead of focusing on colleagues' feelings, you should focus on common goal of making department and the company move forward in the marketplace. I think your colleagues' reactions described in this question might be called stonewalling, which is one of the ways to demonstrate defensive behavior. Stonewalling means that the person shuts down when feelings are overwhelming during the conflict. Instead of looking inside and finding opportunities to get better and look forward at this experience as potential opportunity, especially when they can't do anything about the changed environment and they find the blame in another person and mentally justify their behavior. Here are some recommended steps how you can respond as a leader in your department. You should not feel bad about what happened. You were selected for a promotion for a reason and there is nothing to apologize for. Number two, you should be empathetic but do not try to please your colleague. Number three, you should focus on the common goals for the department. You should build a plan to move forward, be a change agent, address all the issues that you've learned about when you were a peer with your colleague, and you should lead by example. Let's look at the key traits assessed in this question. I think the essential traits that are being assessed are empathy, leading by example, and genuinely try to help others. There are also some red flags that this question is trying to look for. For example, feeling guilty and focusing on feelings instead of work deliverables. Based on this, I think that the least recommended choices in order would be choices A and C. Choice A, apologizing for the fact that you were promoted over your friend. And choice C, schedule a meeting to discuss your colleague's feelings. I would say that the most recommended answers would be choices D, E, and B. I think staying strong and maintaining professional behavior is always a good strategy, which gains you respect from peers, management, and company's customers. Instead of focusing on feelings of another person, you should focus on common goals for the department to advance your organization and do it by building an action plan. At the same time, you should genuinely try to help your colleague to advance and ask her about her career aspirations. So my recommended choices in order would be choice D, staying professional, 
Choice E, prepare a 30-day action plan as a manager of the department. And last but not least, choice B, ask your colleague about her career aspirations. Do you have a better way to solve it? Please make sure to post your answers and rationale in comments. Here's the very interesting question we frequently see on the test. You recently overheard conversation between two people in marketing department about the potential change in the remote work policy, which would require everyone to start coming to the office daily. Currently, you are only required to come into the office two times per week. You are very concerned about this potential change since you are taking care of elderly parent living with you. What should you do next? And you need to select all that apply in order. Choice A. Immediately schedule a meeting with your manager. Choice B. Call HR and confront them about the potential change. Choice C. Wait until the next day before taking any actions. Choice D. Discuss the issue with your colleague who has connections with the leadership team. And last but not least, choice E. Start researching alternative elderly care options. Do you know the answer? Take a close look, maybe pause this video so you can analyze the question and come up with the right choices. Hopefully you've made your selections because I am moving forward on my end to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Let me start with the key considerations and analysis of the facts. Number one, there has not been an official announcement of the change and what person overheard from other people are just rumors and speculations of potential changes and should be treated accordingly. I believe there are a few key considerations to help you select the right answer. Number one is that speculations and rumors of what might happen are very frequent in the workplace and have negative consequences for everyone. Speculations can create emotionally charged environment and strain trust between colleagues. Work quality is affected as well as morale drops significantly. A lot of companies also have policies in place to prevent distribution of misinformation. I think the key to answer this question correctly is to demonstrate emotional control and evaluate what happened based on facts. Until official announcement was made, information you overheard may not be accurate. It is possible you overheard preparation for the official announcement but also it is possible that you might have overheard someone else's speculations and rumors. As a leader in the workplace, you can assess the situation and behave based on facts, setting up an example. So how can you select the right answer for this question? As a leader, you always have an opportunity to evaluate the situation and calibrate your response. Basically, recognize and balance. First of all, you need to evaluate trustworthiness of the sources and if they represent official information. You also need to be able to understand what are available facts. If necessary, you need to gather more information, but without creating anxiety in the workplace. You also always have an opportunity to review alternatives and understand the worst case scenario. This question also evaluates you on self-controlling your emotions. Because the outcome of the potential change is very important to you, it is very easy to get emotional. But it is unclear if the change is going to take place since there was no official announcement yet and it is possible you just overheard rumors and speculations. The best way to approach this situation might be to practice self-control and plan your response instead of reacting emotionally. Considering all this, let's look at how to develop a better self-control because it is very important in answering this question. To better control your emotion, you need to pause to understand what just happened. Some experts recommend pause for 24 hours or longer. It is also important to focus on the things that you can control. In case potential change is implemented, how bad is it going to be? A lot of times the worst case scenario is not catastrophic. And then the last but not least technique, the one which I like the most, is focusing on the positive aspects of the change. Are there anything positive that might happen after the change is implemented? Can you focus on that? I believe that essential traits tested in this question are emotional self-control, stress management, optimism, and maintaining positive attitude, as well as ability to adapt to changing environments 
and leading others by personal example. Let's look at each one of these traits in more details. Self-control is the ability to navigate through difficult situations without losing the focus. Your ability to maintain anxiety allows you to manage your stress and control impulses and monitor and self-assess your emotions. Positivity in the workplace is contagious and optimistic leaders are able to pursue goals even when they are faced with a lot of obstacles. Change is an essential part of the workplace and leaders that are able to adapt to the change quickly and remain flexible in the changing environment make better decisions and more valuable to the organizations. I also believe that based on your responses, this question can uncover some red flags in your thought process. Those red flags might be impulsiveness in responses, inability to differentiate facts from rumors and speculations, and creating a drama in the workplace. Some leaders think that time is of the essence, and they believe that they need to move quickly to respond, instead of evaluating the facts and gathering more information. Impulsive behavior typically limits analysis of the information before acting and makes people act without thinking about the consequences. Most of the time, people that demonstrate impulsive behavior, as well as people that do not know how to handle emotionally charged situations, create drama in the workplace. Based on this, I believe choices A, B, D, and E are the choices to avoid. Choice A. Immediately schedule a meeting with your manager. You do not have enough information to schedule a meeting with the manager since there are no facts to discuss. Choice B. Call HR to confront them about the potential change. Very similar situation, you might be creating a drama without evaluating the facts. Choice D. Discuss the issue with your colleague who has connections with leadership team. Colleague may not know anything about this and approaching the colleague with this information will just spread the rumors. And last but not least, choice E, start researching alternative elderly care option. Even though this is always a good thing to do to have a backup plan, at this point it's not justified to spend time doing this activity. Companies are looking for leaders with strong emotional self-control that can deal with challenges, maintain focus, and navigate challenging situations. Postponing actions and response until factual information is available is the best choice in a lot of situations. By practicing self-control, you can also create a precedent in the workplace and set a good example for your colleagues. So based on this information, my recommended answer is choice C. Wait until the next day before taking any actions. Do you have a different thought process or different choices that you would recommend? Please make sure to post your answers and suggestions in comments. Thanks for watching. If the content was helpful, please give us a like and consider subscribing. This is the way for you to tell us that you need more content like this and we'll make sure to deliver it for you in the future. For links and resources referenced in this video, please check the description. You can also go directly to our website howtoanalyzedata.net to find what you're looking for and download the materials. We really thank you for your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. Please leave feedback, suggestions, or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.